Attends. <laughs> I love saying that. Okay, do some action. Okay. Hello. This <laughs> this is Shannon and Aura's excellent Oscar adventure, Oscar Wilde, and we are uh, celebrating the 15th Academy Awards. Can you believe it? The 15th. We've done 15 of these now. Um, uh, 1943, honoring films in 1942, and we selected, well, we actually didn't select it at first, but I'm glad we did in the end, Mrs. Miniver, which was the Academy Award winner and won six Academy Awards, so it was a sweeper. Um, do you want to talk about the film? I will talk about the film, or at least start talking about the film. You have this upper middle class, a relatively wealthy, affluent family in the outskirts of London during World War II. You can tell World War II is coming. They have two small children. They have an older son that, that has been away at school. Um, Oxford. At Oxford. Um, and so that's a setting there. There's a, a, a side story about a rose that's named after uh, Ms. Miniver. Um, but basically World War II is coming and they, the film follows this family's experiences through World War II. And it's actually World War II, so it's a modern mm -hmm. film. Modern film. Right, right. It's, it's uh, done in 1942, and of course World War II is happening uh, during this uh, period of time. Uh, so the son comes home, um, he's sitting down having dinner, a young lady comes over, um, there's squabble. a bit of friction, there's a little squabble between the two of them. Why? Um, why were they squabbling? Because Gosh. Vin is... Oh, I remember that one. Yes. Vin is um, very conscientious of the social inequalities of the haves and the haves nots. And so he's fighting for the have nots. And, That's true because the... And ashamed of his own status. The young lady yes. who's very, very cute, very, very sweet, her grandmother has always won the uh, prize for the best rose year after year after year. Uh, it's almost kind of sad where she's going to win the prize for the best rose, and he is pointing out the fact that because she's affluent, because she kind of runs this little part of the, uh, you well, know, she's a lady. She's a lady, and she has the estate and a title, and she always wins. And the rose that's named after the lead, Ms. Miniver, um, is done by a poor guy. I think he's an attendant at the train station or something along those lines, and a gardener. And so he has this, you know, incredible rose. He wants to name it after Ms. Miniver. Yeah. And, um, and so the young man, the son, Ben, is pointing out the fact that uh, maybe somebody should win the contest based on their merit and not their title and rank. And so they have a delightful squabble. And, of course, you know, 30 minutes later, they're fast in love and are going to be married. And I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> That's not most of the story, though. It's really around the people of England who are dealing with war and the struggles of war and how they participated. Because... Really, the bottom line is um, Clem, the husband, Mrs. Miniver is Kay, and Clem is her husband. He's an architect. And the Dunkirk event where the people um, of, of London go in their small boats to go and evacuate the, um, the army, the British army from Dunkirk and get them out of there um, occurs. And so he leaves to go uh, be part of this group of boats to go pull the army out and um, Mrs. Miniver is very upset and worried and during that period of time um, there had been a plane that crashes um, right near their town, their fictional town, and um, a German um, soldier had escaped basically the plane. And so lo and behold she the, the soldier is in their garden and she tries to get the gun away from him because he's passed out, but he wakes up and she's at gunpoint and he forces her into the house and wants food and a coat and then starts, you know, preaching about how Hitler's going to win everything and take over the world. And um, then he passes out again because he's injured and so he gets taken away. Clem comes back um, from the Dunkirk event. And then um, there, uh, in the meantime, uh, Vin and Carol um, do get married, and they're in Scotland. They come back from Scotland, um, af um, actually a scene later because Len and Kay, the Minivers, and their two kids need to go into like one of those... Um, oh, the Battle of Britain's going on. Yeah, so they need to be underground. Bomb shelter. Bomb shelter. 
And so you hear all the bombs, and they're trying to, you know, make it as comfortable for the kids as possible. They're trying to read Alice in Wonderland while it's like you hear all the bombs and the air airplanes. Everything gets... But they actually did a pretty good job Yeah, of I mean, it was really good, because you see it in their faces, and they're really trying to just kind of protect their kids. That's all they're trying to do. And then the lights go out, and then the bomb shelter gets destroyed, and the house gets destroyed, and, you know, they go back into the house, and half the house is gone, but they're, you know, very nonchalant about it for the benefit of the kids, you know, trying to manage it. And um, so then, the, then Vin and Carol come back from the... Um, honeymoon, so they were married like a whopping two weeks, and then, you know, Carol's all worried and talking well, to Well, at the same time, Ben, I mean, he's a RAF pilot, and so right. he's going up constantly in the battle of... Uh, yeah, so he goes up and battle quite a lot, actually, throughout this whole movie, and the whole, you know, it's a cute little piece where he, he revs his engine when he's flying mm -hmm. over that, that neighborhood so that his parents know he's okay. Um, anyway, so Carol is very distraught, you know, and talks to Mrs. Miniver Kay about the fact that she knows that this love might be very short-lived um, because he might die any day, so she's going to make the most of it. Um, and then the next thing you know, he's called out again right after the honeymoon um, to fight another one of the big battles. And so Kay and Carol decide that they're going to take him to drop him off for this big battle. And on their way back, there's a big attack. So on the way back, um, Mrs. Miniver stops the car and tries to shelter her and Carol while um, the the there's fighting, a dog fight going on. Yeah, you know, planes are overhead, and one plane crashes near them, and um, there's a whole bunch of me machine gun fire, and Carol's injured. Actually, she's hit by a random bullet, and so Mrs. Miniver gets her home and like. Ten minutes later, Carol dies. Um, so ironically, Carol's worried about losing Vin, but Vin ends up right. losing Carol. Which yeah, was actually, I was very ironic. Yeah. I, I was completely surprised by that because yeah. you would almost assume the way everything is leading up that Vin's going to be shot down and die, and right. they're going to have to deal with that. But it turns out, you know, Carol's the one that dies. Right. Um, by this time, also the right at this time, the Rose Show is happening, and. Of course, Lady Belton is given the award, but Lady Belton realizes the error of her ways, mm -hmm. thanks to Mrs. Miniver saying, hey, you're really doing the wrong thing. And so Lady Belton actually, um, you know, she's the one that announces everything because she's like the head of the town. She is like this royalty, a lady, uh, actual lady. Um, and she actually gives the award away um, to the person the railroad hand, the gardener that actually deserved it, which I thought was right. amazing. That happens right before everything. Kind and of then the next it. thing you know, the, the railroad guy dies. He's hit by mm -hmm. fire. Um, so he dies, Carol dies, and some other people die. And so the last scene is everybody singing in church, and the church is completely destroyed. So overhead you see just mm -hmm. sky because it's all destroyed and airplanes. Um, and um, Vin goes to stand next to Lady Belton because Lady Belton was also the aunt of Carol, right? Mm -hmm. And at first they didn't have a good relationship. The right. and well, Lady Belton she wasn't, was good, enough. Aunt, she wasn't good enough for the daughter. Right. Oh, sorry. Um, so she sta they stand together in solidarity, and it's you know it was, it was actually pretty. It was much better than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah it, it, it really was, was. Yeah, I mean Shannon of course wanted the fighting from the beginning. Even and, though you yeah. like. But you know the story's leading in a certain direction, and you know this movie is crafted during World War II, and you know there's a lot of propaganda, and it's really cliché and way over the top with respect to, you know, that. Uh, it still works. Well, and Mrs. Miniver was a very good actress. They were all were actually yeah. really good actresses. Uh, Greer Garson is her name, and Walter Pidgeon was the husband. They were excellent actors. Mm -hmm. You know, you really could feel, A, there was chemistry between them. Mm -hmm. And they did play a little bit in that way, um, and um, and you know just like their facial, uh, kind of how they were trying to hide things to protect the very very young right. kids, and how you know she was yeah, she, was she well. loved her son so much. Vin, it was like mm -hmm. me and Elias, like how I'm always like Elias. Um, she was like that with Vin, you know, like oh. um, it was kind of cute, um, and so but. Um, so this film is a standard Hollywood film, mm -hmm. and it got huge, huge accolades in Britain um, for really showing how um, 
the British people, you know, went through the hardships along with the troops. Right. And really, they're trying to sell. Well, America's already entered the war at this point, but they're really trying to show the importance of America's participating in the war to help Britain out. And that's not, that's a recurrent theme that happened, you know, even beginning in '39 and going into '40 and '41. Yes. Um, trying to bring, you know, the might of the United States into the war. And of course, this is made by Hollywood, and they're trying to actually, you know, I guess sell the importance of the war. Well, on top of it, people didn't really know what was going on in Dunkirk. I mean, I never knew it. You knew it. Um, you know, the fact that... Well, the, it would have been all... It would have been the newspapers back then. Um, and maybe in Britain. Well, in the United States, I mean... But people today, I think, by and large, don't know that much about Dunkirk. No, it's true. I mean, that, I that know person, anything. I mean, wouldn't really know right. that much about it. But um, what did Churchill... Churchill was president at the time. Prime Minister. Prime Minister, and he... Oh, right. Go oh, ahead. He had a great saying. Yeah. And of course, after the Battle of Britain's over, um, and during the Battle of Britain, and this kind of shows it a little bit, you had the RA of pilots that went up night after night after night, and day after day after day, and fought the Battle of Britain. Um, and he has that classic quote, quote where he goes, Never in the fields of human conflict has so much been owed by so many to so few. And Churchill said that this film actually did more for the efforts of That's the a good war line. Yeah. Um, than any flotilla of artillery. Is that what he said? Something I mean, like that. Probably gunboats or battleships yeah, or, battleship or something like that. Airplanes. Uh, uh, basically, and the film really did do a lot because it is uh -huh. during World War II. As a matter of fact, there was a piece in Wikipedia about how they changed some of the scenes because they started filming, filming before... Um, you know what was going on in Japan <laughs> with Pearl Harbor, and so they changed some of the scenes after um, Pearl Harbor to make it uh, a little bit more harsh, mm -hmm. to be a little bit more realistic. So it won six awards. Um, yeah. Best screenplay, best outstanding motion picture, best director, best actress, best supporting actress, and, and then rest um, something a little more minor about the film itself. But, um, and I would definitely yeah, agree, was... it was a great film. We started watching something that was called, like, My Sister Eileen or something like that. Yeah, which was based on really a play. Bad. And, yeah, kind of it was not good. Um, there was a sequel to this film. It was like the Miniverse story. I don't know anything about the sequel. It happened in the 50s. Um, this film got incredible um, box office revenue. Um, so it was a big hit. Um, Greg Garson is beautiful. Um, yeah, I would recommend this film. Mm -hmm. um, I very much like. And after it. we watched the trailers on YouTube, we said there's no way we're gonna watch this because it looks just really cliche and over the top. And we were really, really we're, we yeah. watched it in one night. Yeah, which is very rare for uh, us. So that says a lot. We mm -hmm. watched it in one night. I mean, and my sister Arlene was just so bad that we just yeah. turned that one off. So would you recommend? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I do like it. Uh, and in spite of the fact that I thought it was going to be horrible, I found myself actually enjoying it. Yeah, it was a good uh, film. Really worth seeing. We're, we're seeing it without even appreciating, you know, the historical and the cultural context in which it was, uh, you know, created. Just okay. a good film. Yeah, good film. Now, of course, we've totally spoiled it because the end was kind of dramatic about the fact yeah. that people died instead of in. But oh well. Um, next film, Casablanca. We actually already saw it. The classic. We line after weekend. classic line after classic yes. line after classic line. So we will uh, review that. So until then, sayonara.